In this short film we're going to talk about the River Shannon and ESB's operations on the river. Rising in Cavan, the Shannon flows for 260 kilometres through 10 counties, covering a huge area about half the size of Wales. In an average year, the Shannon will see a rainfall of up to one metre, and up to a quarter of this could fall in one very wet winter month, resulting in a water level increase of up to two metres in some locations. If you can imagine two and a half million Olympic-sized swimming pools, this is what the Shannon drains out to sea each year. Alas, we are also familiar with flooding in the region, which has been happening for thousands of years. The almost flat gradient of the Shannon makes it a very slow-moving river, taking many days for rain that falls in Cavan to reach Limerick. The river drops only 15 metres over a 200 kilometre stretch from Loch Allen to Killaloo. And in comparison, the building regulations require a drain pipe to have an incline almost 100 times greater than the Shannon. So this begins to show us how easily the river can flood. In order to help understand how the Shannon works, I want to explain about sluice gates and weirs. A sluice gate is a gate in a river put there to help control the flow. It is opened to allow water to flow under it, but depending on its design, water can also flow over it if the level upstream is high. Sluice gates are used to control water levels both upstream and downstream. There are sluice gates at a number of places along the River Shannon, usually to help control water levels for navigation. ESB operates three sluice gates on the Shannon. One at Bellantra at the outlet of Loch Allen, one at Athlone Weir at the outlet of Loch Ree, and one at Partin Weir downstream of Loch Derg. The three biggest lakes on the Shannon, Loch Allen, Loch Ree and Loch Derg, are connected by very narrow channels. These bottlenecks restrict the water's flow and can result in overland flooding, particularly in the area between Athlone and Loch Derg. At Lone Weir, downstream of Loch Ree, is a weir with a number of sluice gates at its western end. ESB controls these sluice gates, and there are a number of things we have to watch when we operate them. The first is the level in Loch Ree itself. We open the sluice gates to try and reduce the lake level to the minimum safe navigation level throughout the summer period. However, we also have to watch the level downstream in the Callows area. The Callows is a low-lying, flat area downstream of Athlone that waterlogs easily, even in summertime, and flow through the sluice gates can exacerbate this. So it's always a case of finding the right balance. A third thing that we have to watch out for is droughts, when there is very little flow in the river. This happens rarely, but when it does, we open the sluice gates to allow fresh water down for the benefit of the fish and the wildlife downstream. Ultimately, the main influence on the level in Loch Ree is not the operation of the sluice gates, but rather the amount of rain that falls in the Shannon catchment upstream. ESB's role on the Shannon is to ensure the generation of electricity at Ardna Crusha. South of Loch Derg and Killaloo, the gradient on the river, which has been relatively flat up to that point, becomes steeper. Between there and Limerick City, there's a 30 metre drop in level, and it is the energy in the water associated with this drop in level that the builders of Ardna Crusha harnessed when they built the scheme in the 1920s. In order to harness the water energy, they had to divert water away from the Shannon. This was achieved by building a 12 kilometre man-made canal to the power station at Ardna Crusha. Once the water arrives at Ardna Crusha, it flows through one of the four turbines in the power station. These turbines and their associated generators transform the water energy into electricity which is fed into the national grid and provides power for homes and businesses around Ireland. Most of the water normally flowing in the Shannon is diverted to Ardna Crusha. The amount varies from time of year. During the summer there's relatively small amounts of water flow. But during the winter, when the station is operated at maximum capacity, 34 million tonnes of water a day flow through the power station. This is the equivalent of 14,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. ESB does not store water in Loch Allen or Loch Ree for electricity generation, and the water level in these lakes has no immediate influence on the amount of electricity produced at Ardna Crusha. We closely monitor the water level in Loch Derg, and when it rises, we increase the flow of water through Ardna Crusha, thus taking more water from the lake. Once our maximum flow capacity at Ardna Crusha is reached, 
and if the level of the lake is still rising, we then start opening the gates at Parteen Weir. This allows the excess water to flow down the old Shannon. During large floods, the amount of water flowing in the river is greater than the capacity of Arden Crusher. In these circumstances, the excess water has to be allowed to continue flowing down the old river channel. This is achieved by opening the gates at Parteen Weir. This is, in effect, the only place along the river where ESB actively controls water flow during floods. The operation of Arden Crusher also provides a flood alleviation benefit by diverting large quantities of water away from vulnerable areas in the Lower Shannon. The primary cause of flooding on the Shannon is due to it being a long, flat, slow-flowing river combined with spells of heavy rainfall. When a large flood occurs, the starting levels in the lakes have little or no influence on the peak flood water levels because of the flow restrictions in the river. The natural features of the river are such that ESB can only manage the water when it reaches Loch Derg. The risk and extent of flooding on the Lower Shannon area is reduced by the amount of water diverted from the river through Ardna Crusha. For further information on ESB's electricity generation operations, please see our website.